Hello YouTube chess lovers, my friends, this is Gunjan here. Welcome to the 28th episode of Dirty Chess Tricks. In this episode, I am going to show you some of the wonderful tricks against Sicilian hyper excited dragon which arises after the move order e4, c5, knight to f3 and now black plays the move g6. Here my recommendation is you continue with the move d4 and now black has two popular choice in this position. In this video, we are going to concentrate on the move bishop to g7. However, if your opponent plays c captures d4, then I am recommending that you should capture with the queen. And I have included a sample game in the PGN where Super Grandmaster Veselin Topalo has been crushed by his low rank opponent. And the setup used by the white is very easy to learn, yet very effective. Okay, bishop to g7. Black's idea is to create the pressure in the center as quickly as possible. However, white has this tricky move in the picture that is d capture c5. The main line continue with the move queen check and after the move c3, black regain his pawn with the move queen capture c5. Here white has tried many options but I am going to show you a very tricky move which not only contain a lot of tricks but as we will see, against the most popular responses by the black, white get a tremendous advantage and attacking position. The tricky move is knight to e3. As I have highlighted over here, black has tried these three good options. And against each of them, white has some great shock weapons. The first move I want to consider is d6. Well, after that, white should continue with the following plan. First of all, bishop to e3, attacking the queen. Kindly note, queen cannot go to the c7. The simple reason is, after knight to b5 and queen to c6, white can get a pawn just early in the opening. So that's why, after bishop to e3, black should play the accurate move, queen to a5. Well, after that, White attack will continue with the move knight to c4 hitting the queen and after the move queen to c7 white has this tricky move in the picture knight to d4. So clearly white has a threat of knight to b5 and black cannot ignore it. For example in one online blitz game my opponent continue here with the move knight to f6 but after the move knight to b5 it was very clear that white emerge with an extra pawn early in the opening and black cannot even touch that pawn the simple reason is after knight to b6 there is a great disaster in the black camp so this is what happened if black ignored the threat of knight to b5 now there are two ways black can defend this threat one is bishop to d7 and the second one is a6 if your opponent plays bishop to d7, then once again I have included a model game where white player has crushed the black within 28 moves. So the move which I am going to focus on in this video is a6. Well obviously it's stopping knight to b5, but it leads to the another disastrous position for the black and white has this amazing shot in this position knight to f5 <laughs> well that bishop is attack and black has to do something about this now if your opponent plays bishop back to f8 then the simplest is you take this pawn with check and after pawn takes and knight to b6 white regain the exchange just within 12 moves the simple reason is the knight to d5 white indeed get the exchange okay but what happens if your opponent accept this peace sacrifice well more or less same story 
because after g captures f5 white will continue with the move knight to b6 and this time around black can take an extra pawn after f captures e4 but then after knight captures a8 queen to c6 white has this wonderful move queen to d5 which not only simplify the position as white regain the piece with a fork and after king to d8 and knight captures d5 within 15 moves white obtain a rook for the knight and a pawn which is always a decisive advantage the second move i want to consider is knight to f6 which is in fact the highest played move as per the online database but once again white has a very simple but effective setup you start with the move bishop to e3 attacking the queen queen to a5 and now the familiar territory yep knight to c4 queen to c7 and knight to d4 this time around black has few good choices kindly note a6 once again leads to the disaster after the move knight to f5 so that's not a choice for the black let's see what happens if your opponent plays other moves the first move i want to consider is castle on the king side well after that if your opponent allow then you are always going to put this knight on the b5 and now black has to play some careful moves for example if your opponent plays queen to d8 then the simplest is you play e5 hitting the knight and after knight goes somewhere let's say knight to e8 you can in fact win this pawn in a broad daylight and it's very funny that black pcs are doing photo shoot at the back rank so the more accurate response over here is queen to c6 however white can still take this a7 pawn and this time around situation is even worst because if black foolishly take this pawn then after knight capture c8 rook capture c8 and knight to b6 white obtain a winning position The third move I want to consider over here is knight to c6. Well, no price for guessing where's well, next reply, which is very obvious, knight to b5. And now black has to play the careful move, queen to b8. The simple reason why queen to d8 is a very bad move, as white attack roll down on the board with the move e5. And after the move, knight to g8, we have the same pawn grabbing story, knight captures a7. This time around, this move is more poisonous because if black foolishly take this knight, then there comes bishop to b6, trapping the black queen. So it is very obvious that at this point, black has to play the move queen to b8. After that, I'm going to propose a move which will completely demolish black position. Before I show you, I want you to pause this video and find out what is the best reply in this position? Okay, I hope you find this wonderful blow. Knight to d6 check. <laughs> and black position is completely crumbling. For example, if king to f8, then black position is already worse. And here white has this forcing sequence that is e5 hitting the knight. Knight to e8. And after knight captures, king captures, and the move f4, not only black cannot castle, but black's opening is turn out a bit of joke. So that's why at this position, black has to accept this peace sacrifice. E captures d6. And now, can you see the big point behind this peace sacrifice? I hope you do and find this wonderful move, bishop to f4. So our idea is to trap the black queen. And amazingly enough, black doesn't have much good squares for his queen. I got this position two times in the online games, where in the first game, my opponent tried the move b6, which I think already a big time mistake, because after knight check, king to f8, and now bishop to g3, white is all set to create havoc in the black camp. My opponent tried the move knight to h5, hitting the bishop, but then comes queen to b3, threatening a mate. He defended with the move knight to d8. 
I took the f7 pawn, hitting the queen. My opponent captured the bishop. I capture his knight. So once again threatening a mate. He played d5. But then the following sequence gives white a winning edge after queen check, king to e8, knight to c6, attacking the queen, queen to c7. And now I simply took this knight and my opponent realized that he has a horrible position because he cannot take my knight. And not only white emerged with an two extra pawn, but black king cannot castle. Probably the most critical response at this position is what happens if your opponent plays knight captures e4. Well here white has to play some accurate moves and the sequence start with the move knight captures d6 check. In the game my opponent tried king to f8 but I have also attached king to e7 in the pgn so you can check it out. After king to f8 I responded with the move queen to d5 hitting two spots. My opponent obviously defended the mate, but then comes queen captures e4, threatening a checkmate. He defended with the move knight to e6. I played bishop to g3, and now indeed similar threats are on the board. He tried queen to c7, I played queen to f3, and after the move knight to g5, I created the same threat once again with the move queen to e3. At this position, probably queen to d8 is a better try, but because my opponent's knight was hanging, he thought that this is a forced draw after knight to e6. But what he missed is, white has this amazing shot in the picture that is knight to f5, hitting the queen, and after the move queen to d8, by force, white can win black's queen. Before I move on, I like you to calculate how white can get black's queen. Okay, I hope you find this wonderful continuation that is bishop to d6 check, king to g8, knight to e7 check, king to f8, and now knight to c6 will nab the black queen. The third and the final move by the black is what happens if your opponent plays bishop capture c3. I think this is one of the most critical reply and white should know exactly what he's going to do about it. Because after b capture c3 and queen capture c3, black is threatening the whole rook. And that's why this line looks so attractive. But in fact, white has invited black to his dirty camp and the trick start with the move queen to d2, offering the whole rook. Well, of course, black is going to take it and it doesn't look like white has any sort of compensation. Well, perception can be deceptive and here white reveal his nasty plan with the move knight to b5. So white is clearly threatening the move knight to c7. The most accurate response over here is knight to a6. But first of all, we should see what happens if your opponent plays a knight to f6, threatening e4. Well, here white has a very simple idea that is bishop to d3, protecting the e4 pawn and now white is all set to trap that queen. For example, a simple line can run like this, knight to a6, castle on the king's side, castle on the king's side and now the simple e5, hitting the knight, knight to d5 and bishop to a3, trapping the queen once and for all. So black has to forcefully take this rook. After bishop captures f1, not only white emerged with an extra piece, but if black is not careful enough, then things can go from bad to worse. I reached this position in a blitz game where my opponent tried the move knight to c7, and I show him the power of this position with the move queen to h6. So not only white is threatening the move bishop captures e7 and bishop to f6, but a knight to g5 was also in the air. And it is very hard to see how black is defend both the threat. For example, in the game he played rook to e8, but after knight to g5, he simply resigned as white is threatening a checkmate in two moves. 
Okay, let's consider the most critical response that is knight to a6. After that, I'm proposing white should continue with the move knight to c3. So not only safeguarding the b1 and a2 square, but threatening the move bishop captures a6. If your opponent allow this capture, for example, if he plays the move knight to f6, then white can take this knight and after pawn captures, the easier sequence is you castle on the king side. After black plays any move, let's say d6, then bishop to b2 and after queen takes and king takes, for a piece, black has some shattered pawns. So it is very obvious that at this position, black cannot allow this capture. So the force reply is knight to c5. Afterwards, as per the chess engine, the base move suggested is bishop to c4. But I think it's a bit risky. The more solid and a good approach is you continue with the move knight to d4, which is more simplified and has a very clear plan. Kindly note, in this position, if your opponent plays moves such as knight to f6, d6 or b6, any moves, then you can defend this pawn with the move f3 and then on the next move, you can play the move knight to c2 and nabbing the queen. So the only critical response from the black is he has to take this pawn and after knight captures e4, black's idea is to escape his queen with the move queen to b1. So black is sacrificing some material to get his queen out of the jail, but still white obtain a decent advantage. White should continue with the move f3 and after the move queen to b6. My recommendation is you should continue with the move queen to c3. So there is a discover attack looming on the rook. So black response is forced. Black has to play knight to f6. And now you continue with the move knight to b5 threatening on c7. Black can castle on the king side, but then comes the whole point of the sequence. That is knight to c7 attacking the rook, rook to b8, and now the star move, bishop to b2. This move completely tied down f6 knight, and on top of everything, what is the threat of knight to d5? I raised this position against a national master, where my opponent tried the move queen to c6, attacking both the spot. I responded with the move queen to e5, so white threat remain as it is, and it is just a matter of time before white is delivering the final blow. After a long thing, my opponent come up with the move b5, but I'm afraid this is not stopping the move knight to d5, and no matter however black plays, he get a completely lost position. He played rook to b6, but after knight to e7, he simply resigned. And you can see the potential of this line. If a title player can finish in 20 moves, what happens to your opponent? Well, I hope you enjoy and learn this wonderful tricks in the bishop to g7 line of hyper exited dragon. Feel free to like, subscribe and comment on my video and I'll meet you in my next episode very soon. Bye and take care. But that f3 knight is badly pinned and on top of everything, white has this deadly rook check. So the big question arises: how white get a winning edge from this position? White reveal his amazing attacking idea, g4. <laughs> well, believe it or not, the only move to keep black in the game that is bishop to e6.